Anthony, the internet politician here, and I am telling you now, and you can listen to me later, that age disclaimers in your videos do not offer you any protection from COPPA. That is not to say that other disclaimers, such as those for journalistic purposes or warnings about certain types of content, do not. So let us clear those up first. Considering an exception under United States copyright law, the most common is fair use. Fair use is considered a freedom of expression. That is generally when a piece of media is used by someone other than its creator without permission to either emphasize a point, critique, or use as a subject of news reporting. Generally, the determination for fair use comes down to if enough of the material was altered without reducing the original copyrighted work's potential for market values, similar to parody law. Disclaimers for fair use are generally inserted into the description with citation. Other disclaimers, such as those for flashing images or graphic material, are considered courtesies. Not having those disclaimers on screen or in the description and then displaying flashing imagery or video game violence does not equate to someone being able to initiate a civil lawsuit or criminal complaint. With that said, let's get back to COPPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. COPPA was established in 2013 to safeguard children under the age of 13 years from certain types of content and to protect their personal information. YouTube did not do enough under the law to filter creator content or information collection. That meant that children under 13 years could freely watch the content the United States government had deemed unsuitable for them. To top it off, the children's personal information was generally accessible to the public. COPPA's rules were updated as late as 2017 and the Federal Trade Commission, aka the FTC, leaned on YouTube's owners Google to make changes to adopt to the Act's requirements. By 2019, the FTC had enough of Google dragging his feet and sued them. Settling for $170 million, Google started to implement changes in the back end of YouTube so that creators could more appropriately self-identify their content. YouTube also reduced and or removed financial incentives for creators who attempted to skirt the changes in hopes of gaining more viewers by targeting inappropriate content at children. So what we now get is various checkbox and radio buttons to select as we upload a video. In a video's details, scroll down to the audience subheader. From there, expand the age restriction section and click on show more. Videos now must define the audience. It is made for kids or it is not made for kids. Then the level of restriction needs to be defined. If a video is restricted to those over 18 years, then just like with the children's content, the video's financial incentives could be reduced or removed. Essentially, the determination for full monetization is if individuals between the ages of 13 and 18 years can safely view the content. I am showing this slide because these are more recent additions that add disclaimers to videos. Paid promotion is clicked upon if you were paid to create or place an advertisement into your video. Affiliate programs are typically excluded. Altered content exists now because of a flood of artificially generated deepfake imagery. You would select yes if there is content within the video that makes a real person or people act or say something that did not really actually occur. Same goes if you take a person and put them in another environment. Um, obviously, you need to define yes. So YouTube has very specific policies about how both of these items are monetized. Near the bottom of the details page, a category must be selected. If the video game's category is chosen, the user must define the video game. Below it is the comments and ratings. Comments can be a minefield for certain types of speech. If you are not going to personally moderate it, you may want to turn off comments. Otherwise, select a filtering sub option. In channel setup, specific filtered words can be set. Wow, we've gone through a lot. Uh, essentially, YouTube has changed things enough to where declaring an age rating at an opening of your video is wholly unnecessary. Some creators waste up to a minute of their video's opening thinking that it will somehow offer them additional protection. By the end of the disclaimer, new viewers have most likely clicked off of the video. A lawyer friend of mine defined age disclaimers at the opening of a YouTube video to be about as effective as your aunt reposting one of those Facebook terms of services opt out messages in her feed. Uh, essentially, some people may see it as a sign of ignorance and that is a huge turnoff. To wrap this up, do not waste your time with an age disclaimer. I bet after a few weeks, you will notice an uptick in new subscribers. I sure did. Tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video. Did you like what you saw and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.